This college basketball picks and Mac Conference Tournament Edition of the Sports Game Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K U T T dot com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100X in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also ready by Champs. Run your own March Madness pool and enter Champs free bracket contest for a chance to win one thousand dollars. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs to enter today. We're also ready by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get fifty percent off your first month and start making smarter bets today. What's up, everybody? You're watching SGPN. Fuck the Cowboys. Let's go, baby. The sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Hope everyone's hydrated. 10 game, 10 conferences, lots of games, lots of uh, electricity. A lot March, of action. March Madness is here. Villanova survived, did not come anywhere close to covering the spread, but they did. Uh, cash the money line. So shout out to our boy Fezzik Ryan who gave out Villanova minus four thousand, who eked out a one point victory. I think that's happened. I think he gave out Purdue uh, on a regular season game at like minus twenty eight hundred and similar thing, and they won by like no. one point or something. No, crazy. it was the St. Peter's game that they lost. No, he also gave oh, that okay. one out, but yeah. the, he all, he went back to it this season. The regular oh, season. Sean values value. You know, I, as a fellow <laughs> V guy, I understand oh. seeing value on the street. Uh, as Malcolm says, found money. Mixed bag uh, for some of the games. I mean, Lehigh, uh, fuck you, Colgate. Oh, Not happy wow. about that result. Syracuse went down, but on the plus side, UCLA and Penn State still alive. And people, depending on when they're listening, this might be laughing. But my Gauchos, Ryan, uh, game's about to tip. I'm optimistic. Mm. Uh, this is March. How you feeling, Ryan? I know, unfortunately, your Hokies went down. Uh, it's all right. Coach Pry has the football team <laughs> cooking. I got some tickets in my pocket. You want to talk college football futures? Also, Sean, I you know I, I got to be honest. The 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 college basketball team. For Virginia Tech losing today, if if anything, it sets me free. Yes. I'm now fully a free agent for March. Uh, I can focus on what's important, uh, refining the old uh, commandments, seeing what I got to do this year, and and uh, candidly, uh, I'm also just feeling really good right now. Uh, as I've mentioned on the program, I have re-entered the digital horse. Oh yes. Racing uh, you and, uh, situation. You and the legend himself, Scotty Bowser. Stable master. Uh, so uh, SGPN stables lives on, uh, on a new platform. Hell yeah. And I got a video earlier from our, our guy from stable master, Scott, let's just say one of the horses we invested a pretty penny on maybe even started a little bit of a run happened to buy it all before the crypto ba- boom Ooh. too. Uh, let's just say the horse best possible start to the career. Well, it's the uh, it's the one called our gal, right? Won the fucking race by a million. <laughs> Beat a horse called Fly Eagles Fly, actually, Sean. So yeah, uh, a, a lot of the horses in the race were not uh, at the same class level, but there were some, about three or four that were. And whoo, you want to talk about an ass beating? It was worse than Colgate Lehigh, Sean. Oh, how dare you! I, I own sure two attention. college basketball jerseys: a Lehigh one and mm. a Syracuse one, and they they both got destroyed in the same window. Yeah. Where would it go? Well, Where? Syracuse may still have an at-large bid. I oh. don't know. Uh, probably not a great loss there to the Pussy Posse. Shout out to Benedict Danhold who took me up with that ba- sweet, sweet Bayheim jersey. I'm still gonna bring it out to Vegas. Yeah, this is March. Hey, uh, we're about to bring on Colby before we do shout out to cut. Oh man. I've just been loving cut, loving the action. 
all the uh, college basketball conference tournament bets I've been putting in over on cut.com. First off, I use the promo code SGPN. I got the 10% su- sign up bonus. They've all been filling in time for the game. And it's uh it's great. Not not paying much in juice at all. I mean, a lot of these are like, you know, minus one oh three, plus one hundreds. And uh, of course, you can send over custom bets to get listed over at cut.com. I know the uh, golf gambling podcast guys just got a bet up there. Uh, Steve is a golfer. Capper is a golfer. You can you can bet on who is going to win in their head to head. I'm talking to the guys over at Cut to get uh, uh, Rafferty uh, listed for uh, how many times he's going to say onions. I think uh, maybe the first day of the tournament still going to come. Up. We got to figure the number. I think we're going to go one and a half. Got to figure out how many games they play. Uh, but uh, cut is just it's it's a paradise, and it, we have a SGPN group over there. You can chat it up, but again, no trouble uh, getting this action filled, including my Cal State Northridge money line. Got that over on cut.com promo code SGPN. Joining us on the line, you know him, you love him from the college basketball experience. Pick Dundee himself, Colby Dan. What's happening, Colby? Well, I was dumb enough to fo- to to fade the system known as Colgate, <laughs> having an up and down <laughs> night. But that game bothers me because I normally do a system play with Colgate every time. But I bought into this Mountain Hawk bullshit. And uh, another thing is uh, the Gauchos are Santa Barbara, Sean. So thank you for uh, taking Santa Barbara because yeah. they're gonna they're gonna take I, down I, those I Matadors. Gauchos? I was I was yeah. gonna bring that up, but you know I figured I. Oh, know. I know, I know, I know where Matadors. I must have. Uh, I, I mean. I must have misspoke. You know, the the game's up. There's a lot, a lot of moving parts. Santa Barbara did just s- jump out to a three nothing lead, uh, so maybe that's what uh, triggered it in my brain. But you're right, Colby. I am on the the Cal State Northridge Matadors packed house for the big. I mean, West these Bell. games <laughs> have been insane today, right? I mean, the Stanford yeah. Cal game. As a guy that has a Stanford future, I thought it was cooked. Stanford finds a way to get the dub. I had a bet on Riverside and a future. Thought that was cooked. Uh, but both survive. But then at the same time, Texas loses. Look, I, I, I had a big bet on Texas, but if there's ever a, a team you should lose on, it's either, you know, NC state <laughs> or Texas. So uh, how quickly you know, were glad, you rooting against Texas? How quick oh, right, when the, right when the game started uh, and I saw their fucking fan base, I was like, all right, fuck my bet. Let's go Kansas state. Um, yeah. That's just how it goes. You can't okay. root for Texas. Even if you, I don't care if like you're, if you have all the money in the world riding on it. You just you start watching it and you go, man, I really, I really fucking hate this program. Um, uh, I did, anyway, and they actually they interviewed Matthew McConaughey after the game. He's like, oh man, that's so far, that's so bad, man. This is not groovy at all. Oh, how did we lose the K State, man? I, I mean, I don't have a problem. <laughs> You're harsh in my mellow. I, I gotta go home and bang, bang the bongos. Be bop, be bop. Sports just—it is interesting. All right, all right. You're a you're a college, and your minister of culture is a guy who it just doesn't strike me as an all the way sports guy. He's like, ah, you know, we lost. All right, I'm I'm all right. I'm just gonna go get high, go get high, uh, <laughs> hang out with about fifteen naked weed. broads. Yeah, I mean, you could do worse, but I know what you mean. He doesn't seem like I doubt he's grinding uh, Ken Palm and uh, looking at I, film. I'm telling you, this is like when you're if you're watching someone discussing a topic, just can that can you envision that person being deep in the topic? Can you imagine uh, Matthew McConaughey hanging out in Kramer's garage with a huge lipper, cheering mm. for an incredible lo- run of first half unders? Possibly. I, he does. I mean, he probably I mean, is a lipper. <laughs> It, uh, what actor? Let me ask you this: What what actor oh. do you think would be would be? Because uh, I have a bartending story where, you know, I was kind of a, uh, I wouldn't say that I was a hater, but I was not the biggest fan of George Clooney. But he came in, and he's a huge college basketball fan. So I did not see that one coming as Clooney was. Uh, so we started talking college hoops, and uh, basically I left a, a a Clooney fan because I was like, man, this guy loves college hoops. He is from Kentucky. I probably should have figured that though. Yeah, but who would you, who ball. would you say? Who would you say? Like, is uh, you'd like to hang out? Is there a celebrity out there that you'd say, or an actor that you would say, "Hey, this guy"? And most actors that you you really don't want to know, right? And and uh, is there one Nick Cage? I can see Nick Cage getting down on some. <laughs> the Rock. Oh yeah, I love The Rock. Uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick Cage. Uh, I don't know. I I feel like not a lot of guys who bought dinosaur skulls are also going to be great 
uh, sports hang. I, I feel like Vince Vaughn. You know, he was in Rudy. Might give you some. He seems like a somewhat, as far as Hollywood actors, probably uh, somewhat real. He's from Chicago. OJ count. OJ, yeah, I mean, definitely. He, he is an actor, fan. a fine loves, actor. He, yeah, loves loves fantasy football. Yeah, he seems to hang out with some dudes and like <laughs> totally normal, uh, you know, hang out on a Sunday, watch watch football with OJ Simpson. I'm sure. Hey, that's I don't not- know that he's ever done a bad movie. He's batting a thousand, just like uh, you know his his NFL career. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what what mis- I don't know I I don't understand where the hate comes from uh, for OJ Simpson. Uh, shout out to Corey Z one eight two in the chat. Uh, he's checking in. He said, "Catching my first uh, live show, had to come in and tout. Uh, hit a one five nine five eight to one Whoa. six pick parlay tonight, Corey. To one? Nice. Corey, what?" One hundred sixty to one. Nice. Yeah, the Corey is dialing international with that one. He had Xavier money line, Nichols plus sixteen and a half, Maryland money line, Kansas State money line, Cal Baptist money line, Middle Tennessee money line. That is uh, oh, not yeah. quite, that, not Cal quite Baptist, that Cal not Baptist international. That Cal Baptist ride must have yeah, been right? fun. Yeah, that must you, have been a fun, fun ride there on the Cal Baptist game as they went in overtime against Valley. Yeah, oh, may God. they lay my Wolverines to rest peacefully. <laughs> wow. I, I have my there goes uh, one of the many futures that got cooked today. Although I will say the Colgate, uh, the Colgate tax in my uh, account is looking pretty nice. I, I did want to thank uh, thank Sean for that. Oh, personally. come on, just fuck off with your pro Colgate talk, Ryan. We don't have any time for that. It Were is. Were you just throwing up a three point so- yeah. a sign for your Matadors? Matadors just said a three. Come uh, on, this is the, and this is the from what I understand, uh, this is the big rivalry game, right? CSUN versus Santa Barbara. That was the game you hate. You hated the other team's uh, fans <laughs> the most, right, Sean? All right, let's. Uh, you want to talk some games? Yeah, before we do, of course, uh, shout out to James uh, oh. uh, Brasu. I, I, I'm messing up his uh, pronunciation. He was the Patreon Pick'em winner last week. Uh, Dog. Patreon Pick'em uh, Dog. prize this week is a DJ University prize pack, and of course, uh, getting a bunch of good applications. We'll review some on air and uh, start admitting some people live on the show. DGen.university to submit your application today. And of course, get in on the Patreon, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon. And if you just want to grab some DGen University gear, a SGP hat, college experience hat, court stormer t shirt, first half under. A couple people did reach out. They wanted some clarification. It, are there are there classes that w- people need to attend once they <laughs> once they get into school? Hey, I'm they're not gonna, on the fence. And I'm not going to tell you what is or isn't going to happen at this university. If you have questions like, do we have to go to classes? <laughs> you're probably not DJ University nope. material. I, and someone <laughs> asked who is our rival. It is of course the hated CGU, uh, Corporate Gambling University. Uh, there. Oh really? Uh, I, I thought it was Texas. <laughs> All right, we can throw Texas in there uh, as well. <laughs> horns down. The horns down t shirt also in the merch store. Madness is the promo code 15% off everything. Uh, and that, that promo is not going to last. So make sure you get in there uh, and get some gear. Uh, I assume that uh, the corporate gamble there, it's a, pri- is it, it's a private school, I assume. Oh, yeah. yeah. CGU takes, uh. goes way back. So they're, it's a blue blood. I Ivy like leaves. that too because it all computer generated. There's yeah. lots of lots of angles there. All right, um, can't wait to compete against them in athletics. Take down those <laughs> nerds. Uh, be all right. We so we Nerd! are. We've uh, we've headed into the. We're now in present time. Yes, we've, we've caught up. Uh, days become nights, and then they become days again. And here we are talking about games on Thursday, March fourteenth. Uh, all of these uh, are going to be uh, various tourney games, and then we'll close the show out with some MAC tournament uh, preview. First up, starting early, we're heading right over to the Big Twelve in Kansas City, Missouri. Which, which, by the way, I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures, but there is a. Uh, there's a bit of a the, the, the Big Twelve apparently does a food thing, and there's mm. all, all sorts of interesting uh, food being served. Uh, all of the food that they're serving at this event is just going to make people shit. I got to I got to imagine <laughs> the bathroom situation. No, they offer it. Tro- 
Everything's got an- brisket in it. Everything's got brisket, barbecue sauce, dairy products. I mean, <laughs> this is just a recipe for that it. That is a uh, disgusting. Hey, you, throw a, you throw in a couple of beers this there, and you all of a sudden you don't want to be the guy. Uh, you feel bad for the janitor. <laughs> Just feel bad for the janitor. Feel bad for the fucking en- pipes. Burnt ends. Oh, those those go down <laughs> I, smooth, but they don't go out smooth. I hear that soaked brisket is is tasty. Yeah. Oh, oh. and and well, that's and what she said. This is a great uh, time to bring this up. Shout out to Carter J Monty over mm. on X, slid in the DM saying, "Listen to your podcast as always this morning," and heard you guys talking about BYU and the Mormon heavy states. Did you know that when the world ends, all the Mormons are supposed to go to Independence, Missouri? That is pretty much Kansas City, Missouri, or summer right in the heart where the Royals and Chiefs play. They built this huge tabernacle uh, thing there. Uh, that is a golden monstrosity right off I four thirty five. Google it. The Mormons packed the house today, and I thought BYU played really good ball. Shot the ball really well. You know, they they even had that thing where they were up big. Oh, oh no! Are they going to let him back in? No, they they strangled the, uh, the lead. Well, they did have a mass. I mean, I was able to secure uh, multiple ten to one plus <laughs> yeah. in in game bets on uh, UCF. So they they were certainly up big. Um, yeah, if not for that start, I, I don't know. But yeah, but, I mean, that, no, I, I this thought- is an interesting tip. Why why would they all like what's occurring uh, at Independence, Missouri, <laughs> that they're all convening there? No idea. They were they <laughs> they knew the Big Twelve tournament was going to be happening here uh, hmm. hundreds of years later. I I don't know. I'm not a uh, you know my Mormon history. John Smith was that his name? My it relies all on the Book of Mormon and South Park, so yeah. I I cannot tell you. I'm a uh, expert by. Oh, there was means. a space situation. Yeah. Oh, what, oh, oh what, wow. Look what at that is thing. this? Oh, what? The, that's a Christmas what ornament. What? Yeah, that looks like a, uh, uh, the, the a horn ice? of a. Yeah. I got to be honest. That, yeah, it's either some sort of holiday arrangement or uh, like a really bad oh, yeah. phallic. This, I mean, this how, can very you, phallic. how can you oh fade BYU here? <laughs> what? It's a spaceship. Dude, dude, it this, is, a spaceship. this is. Uh, it looks like a unicorn horn. They have a labyrinth? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a dope. That, that this, does look like a lab. This is an energy device. They're, they're, they're communicating with. I mean, what? They, this is in Missouri. Apparently, yeah. Wow. This is why I don't fly over these states, Sean. Look at this thing. This is this is a communication device. That is. Look, it's that in is a neighborhood. Perfect. Look at that picture. It's just wow. in a basic ass neighborhood. All right. BYU laying a point. I mean, BYU definitely fits that mold of team I instantly <laughs> fall in love with after one game. You're like, oh man, they look amazing. They're gonna go on a crazy run. But I, I I do like this BYU team. I'm all over them here. Potential oh. lock even. Uh, Colby, what are you doing? BYU Texas Tech. Yeah, Soak City USA here in in Missouri and Texas Tech away from Lubbock is always, you know, uh, a little iffy. I'll say, especially since Beard left. So I'll I'll take the the better the better team actually. I think BYU's roster is better, and uh, as long as the game's not in Lubbock, I like BYU's chances to beat Texas Tech. Sorry, I, I I just typed into Google. Why does the Mormon temple near Kansas City have a long point on top? Um, stay tuned. Uh, I'll get back to you later in the show. Ten thirty a. So uh, Discord gets their first pick on Texas Tech. Oh, I, the Discord probably not aware of this fucking <laughs> mega energy temple. V- VC. All right, let's uh, let's head over to the A ten conference tournament taking place and I'm doing all this by memory taking place in Brooklyn, New York at the Barclays Center. VCU taking on UMass. VCU a nice win today. For, Fordham scrappy. Scrappy team. No one really I, I can't imagine anyone wanted to see any more pieces of Fordham. VCU laying a point and a half here. I love the morning basketball uh, out, out on the East Coast or I guess it's afternoon basketball for them, but I like the early starts. There's been good energy in the Barclays Center all week, so expect this to be another close game. Colby, which side you on? I know I have a future on UMass, but I'm a bit. Well, actually, oh, no. I think I took a future on VCU and UMass, <laughs> didn't I? Hey, I pull out your wallet. It's in your pocket somewhere. Hey, does this alert does, alert does US this integrity? Make- we have a situation here. <laughs> I mean, does it make any sense to you? Because uh, UMass beat him by 22. And no. uh, the one time they played, and VCU is a one and a half point favorite. We need to flag this game because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, Very just for that, VCU wins this game. 
I'm with you. I, I mean, VCU uh, as a as a free throw aficionado, mm. there is uh, VCU 78.2 percent from the line. UMass 69.8. Now I know UMass is really good offensive rebounding, but to, to Kramer's point, this might fit that profile of a offense that's propped up by just offensive rebounding because I don't know what else they you know. Uh, thirty-one point four percent from behind the arc. Not particularly, you know, okay at the two ball, but it's tough matchup. It's, I mean, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, UMass, I, UMass, UMass worked them. I, I'm with Colby. I don't know why this line is so short, but uh, not, this reeks. This, yeah, like UMass should be the favorite. If like if, you, if you're setting this line, you'd be like UMass minus what five and a half, because, six and a half. Yeah. yeah what I mean, was the um? What was the what was the the pre-tournament odds for each of them to win? Um, let's see. We got good thing we document everything in these sheets. Yeah. Sean. Um, let's see. A <laughs> ten. All right. Uh, Rit, UMass, UMass was seven to one. VCU was ten to one. Hmm. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think uh, I think if I didn't know if I didn't know the outcome of the games these teams have already played, you I think there was a meeting at Peter Luger's. I would look at the profiles and say that I think VCU's offense could get off against UMass's defense, and I think VCU's defense is going to give UMass's offense problems. So I understand why VCU's favorite. I'll take them. I'll take the favorite. Lot of chalk. <laughs> lot of chalk here. I, UMass- I, I would disagree with your point, but I, I'm I'm going to take them. Well, I would I, not I, just again, look. Up. So if I'm looking at the Ken Prom, Palm profile, which all of our listeners are sharp, so they're or, or Bart Torovic or whoever, what you would see is that VCU relies heavily on the three point shot. They shoot the three point shot efficiently. UMass's defense not not good defending the three point shot. I'd also point okay. out that VCU gets to the line a lot. They're very effective at getting to the line. They shoot a lot of free throws relative to the amount of field goals they shoot. UMass horrible do uh, the other way. And when VCU gets to the line, they are very good shooting the free throw. Meanwhile, on the other side, UMass rely heavily on the two pointer shot, which is one of the strengths of the VCU defense. That that's what they want you to do. Get on the mm. inside and their strength. Like Sean pointed out, offensive rebounding is something that VCU is not bad at. So I don't see an advantage for them on either side of the ball. I just had what my uh, Will you, Ferrell. Old where are you school getting moment. these numbers here? I'm, Cause I'm, I'm, I like, <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm telling uh, you what I'm, I'm telling well, you. What allow the numbers me to retort. Me. Allow me to retort then, because I would say defensive rating wise, v, VCU is three spots better. <laughs> I, I I know that, but I just oh, okay. uh, I'm on that because it doesn't. He said if you just looked at the numbers, it would make sense that VCU is favorite. I would disagree. Um, I that, said this if game I didn't know to, the results of the the how they played the previous games. I mean, That's but I mean. don't even know how you deduce that. UMass sixty first in offense. VCU 141st. Uh, UMass is a top 20 offensive rebounding team. Uh, VCU 246 in offensive rebounding. Yeah, no. When I'm what again, what I'm talking about is the the matchup. Like I think the strength of UMass that offensive rebounding. I think VCU is pretty good on defense. Uh, dealing with that is, is what would be my angle. So, yeah, I, I, I got look. We're we're all agreeing here. Um, you know, I can screenshot the Ken Pop matchup page, and I I'm gonna post it. You're on pissing Colby off, Kramer. P- post it. Well, I, Twitter, I don't use so Ken Palm, was... so that that might be the reason why I don't use Virginia Tech shit I'm, after their performance well, no, today. We st- well, right? Again, um, we, Ken Palm, great hokey, but we we started this with why is the number the number, and that's where we got to the number. All right, moving along. Uh, Colby. You know what it is? He was talking football before this. Yeah. He changed gears. He's, Fired up. He's got to shake off his uh he's he's thinking triple option and wide Just nine. talked AAC. They add Army. We got Army Navy triple option in the American this year. God damn it. Go listen to that on the college football experience. If you want to hear some American football talk in the middle of March, Colby's got you covered. <laughs> Wake Forest, Pittsburgh, little ACC matchup here, eleven AM on the West Coast. Uh, Wake Forest laying a point and a half here in DC. Uh, I will say the Hokies did have the crowd. They just com- that they, they're in the double bonus with over eight minutes left in the second half. They're one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. 
and somehow they managed to screw that. Sh- and Florida State is really, really dumb. Florida State was like almost intentionally fouling when, uh, anyway. or like you know, fouling in so spots dumb. where you wouldn't foul. So, it almost looked like an intentional fouling. What what the fuck's going on? Wake laying <laughs> That's a Florida point State and a half basketball here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Wake laying a point and a half here, Colby. Uh, uh, to, uh, to me, the wrong team's favored. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think you know Wake. They did look good today, but. Um, what name's ass? I, I got to see it twice. I got to see it twice. Well, I'm just saying wake away from Winston Salem has been horrible all year. So we'll see. They got to do it twice. Now at the same time, Pitt has a little bit of that pussy pack mentality to him. Oh, no. I know uh, you know, they just, they, they have games where they just, they lose to teams. They shouldn't lose, but I do think Pitt is the better team. Give me Pitt to win this game. I'll take the points. Yep, got a future on him, sixteen to one. I'm not backing down now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Wake Forest uh, or Pitt got destroyed uh, by Wake Forest in Wake, but then they beat them at home. Uh, in general, Pitt. I mean, when we were making a case for them for a small future play, I, I mean, a lot of it was just based on how they've looked. You know, like mid January on, you know, beating teams like Duke. Uh, NC State, Notre Dame, Virginia, Louisville, Virginia Tech. Like they've looked good in conference, especially as of late. Normally, I'm not one to give up this much uh, on the on the line, but Pitt in conference, uh, I think, does a lot of stuff right, including uh, third in the conference in offensive rebounding, and they don't turn the ball over much in in conference. Second in not turning the ball over. So yeah, I I like the their form coming in. So yeah, give me Pitt as well. Uh, we're all gonna hate Jeff Capel if, uh, when this fails miserably. Oh man, it's been it has been fun to see the teams that just completely decided to no show in this conference <laughs> tournament. All right, hopefully Pittsburgh's not uh, not one of them. All right, uh, Big East, uh, St. John's, Seton Hall. Uh, we're heading back to the Garden. Seton Hall catching four here. St. John's unofficial home game mm. slash home stadium sometimes. Although maybe never if if uh, Patino has his way, uh, th- this has been a good matchup all season. We I I I want to say we did we did we already did we talk about this game? Uh, we've no. talked about a lot of games already. Um, no 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 no. But yeah, I mean, th- th- to me, th- this is uh, I was I was listening to the Patino interview on uh, on Pardon My Take, and he was talking about bounce passes, and I was immediately in on this team. <laughs> and I'm like, well, shit. But then, but, uh, and then I realized Seton, Seton Hall's owned them, though. They they beat I have twice. a Seton Hall future because they own them home and away. Which, by the way, burn burn our. Uh, Burn our Villanova future. What do you mean? They're still alive, Ryan. Burn it. (laughs) Both of you guys, you guys are, you guys have St. John's and Seton Hall. So you're, you're scot free either way. Yeah. Colby talked me into the math here. Um, But since Seton Hall is the uh, bigger payout, I'm going to be rooting for them. I got to take Seton Hall here. I think you got to take them in uh, getting four points. This to me, I know we like uh, Patino in this situation, but this feels like uh, it's going to be a one possession game. So. Uh, give me Seton Hall and the points. I mean, they beat them twice. I I do think St. John's gets up for this game. I understand the case uh, for why they would be favored here, but again, uh, Seton Hall, you got a full six point two percent better at the line, and you're giving them four points in a an arena where I think they will have some fans. Loser losers out too, right? Losers out of the. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Um, <laughs> loser goes home. Well, if it's St. John's, I do think they're not going to make the tournament. If if Seton Hall loses, I think they're still in. Okay. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it depends on some of the other outcomes too. But uh, I'm on St. John's. Do you guys remember what happened last game? They played in the Garden. St. John's blew a 22 point lead, I believe. Um, well, here's the thing. I, do we know if he's going to be wearing the white suit? Because that certainly impacts the <laughs> handicap. I just think it's hard to beat a, a, a Patino coach team three times, and then the yeah. fact that they blew a twenty-two point lead. I'm going to take the Johnnies to get it done here. They're the better offensive team. They also take better care of the basketball. Seton Hall's a walk and turnover, and uh, I think Ooh. that's all the difference. Let's go. I mean, I I don't Ooh. I don't love. I'm taking the four points because I think it's going to be a good game. I don't love Seton Hall on the money line. I see the case for the bounce back spot. I see the case for. Uh, not being able to beat Patino three times in the same year, 
but it's still four points for a Seton Hall team that I I, I like the way they're playing ball right now. So I, I'm going to stick with it, but I, I see the case for St. John's. Strong ass uh, take there, Colby. Strong ass yeah. off. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean there. certainly the turnovers would be the worry because that uh, Patino's teams tend to do that. Uh, but I, I'm I'll, I'll stick with New Jersey here. TCU <laughs> taking on Houston. Colby, remember when he stuck it and stood up for the mafia? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I mean, I, I mean, can, uh, you know what? Uh, can we, uh, Josh? Let's make sure we clip Sean making fun of the mafia and circulate well, it as much as possible. He did tell me behind the scenes, Sean, the free John Gotti, and I was like, dude, he he died a while ago, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm yeah. not, I'm not aligned with the Gotti family. Uh, uh, d- d- please, well, we're any, not all anytime, the same. Anytime we go to the the uh, the circa downtown, there, he's always like, hey, can we go to the mob museum? I want to pay my respects. He's uh, it's just very- because I sound this way. TCU Houston. We're back in the big 12 tournament noon on the West coast, uh, Kansas city again, uh, TCU uh, once again, absolute roller coaster. Every oh, time man. they take the court uh, and you can even see it in their players. They're like, oh man, fuck. Like you know, there's times <laughs> where they're just like, ah, oh, fuck. I did the wrong thing again. TCU catching 10 against Houston. Houston obviously rested. They're a wild team to have action on. They just are. It's it's been a wild season. If you're Houston, though, you want to you don't want to win this conference tournament, right? Do you care? Uh I don't know. I don't You might care about this game because TCU beat them the last time they played, right? Yeah, and it's it's their first year in the Big 12. Maybe they value one of their three revenge spots potentially. Well, yeah. Oh man, T- ten points for TCU is a lot. Still, it, it, you got to take you got to take TCU. You got it. I mean, they're they're a veteran team. Houston, like you said, they turn man, the ball over been, so much though. Like what what you said about Seton Hall applies here against Houston. That's what. That, yeah, no, you're right. You're and and we could lose we could lose on that, but at the same time, like dude, they just beat Kansas and held them to forty. Like you did you tell me they weren't partying a little bit after they won the Big Twelve title and I, fucked I up Kansas. I, I I'll agree. take the I ten and a half. They probably still win the game, but I actually don't think it's a crazy money line play either, though. Well, we, we all have we all have TCU uh, futures at sixty five to one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna ride with that uh, that logic there. I mean, if you're betting this individually, I still like it at plus. Are we calling it ten or ten and a half? What do you why why are you? Uh, Colby tried to squeeze a half point in there. Oh, I just want to make sure for accuracy. No. I, it- I grabbed ten. I okay. saw ten. If, if there's a ten and a half, I'll take a ten and a half. I just want to, you know, make sure. You know, U.S. Integrity does monitor our program, so I want to make sure everything is we above board. No, we yeah, we don't want any irregularities. <laughs> oh, oh hey, no! Oh, s- no. Says the guy. <laughs> Oh no! S- says the guy who's on the gauchos. All right. All right. Uh, well, because uh, <laughs> now everyone knows what side I'm on, and just because I'm drunk and I have a million things going on and not paying attention doesn't mean I'm oh, trying to switch. The old my million pick. things going on. <laughs> the old million things going on. No, um, but buddy, you just gotta you gotta stay thinking about these games. If you just get on the show, oh, I'm, sa- I'm staying. You gotta this. think after the game. After the show, you know what I mean. What do you think when I'm when I'm in plank? What are you thinking about? What do you think I'm thinking about in hot yoga? I'm not thinking about the chick with the amazing <laughs> ass right in front of me. No, I'm thinking about San Diego State UNLV. What am I doing here? Am I taking the running rebels? I, I don't I'm know, man. Because look, I heard that last story when you were in hot yoga. I think you might be thinking. You know, I've seen plenty of quarterbacks, the, especially the lawn chair quarterbacks, get a little shook after that concussion. Mm. Next yeah. time. They're throwing the ball out of bounds on 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 just I have the, a week. The, I have a week. Yeah. hot yoga locker chin. Now, I'm saying uh, you might just be a little got shook. One concussion. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, really hilarious side story. Uh, was uh, working on on looking at possible insurance quotes, and I guess the uh, the <laughs> the the person wait, wait, that wait, was what are we co- talking here? A little forensic file type no, situation. No, no health health insurance. <laughs> are you getting some life? <laughs> and it was from a. It was from someone. Colby, uh, Sean needs your social for some life insurance. Yeah, we, uh, we're we're taking out a massive insurance policy before the Vegas trip, Colby. Nothing to be scared about. Uh, the the uh, a listener of the show reached out. He works in insurance. He's like, hey, blah blah blah. Would love you know get a quote. And so uh, we were going back uh, and forth. That's always be closing right there. A- and then uh, his uh, a woman who works for him reached out randomly. I hadn't, I hadn't talked to him in a little while. Reached out randomly. He's like. I listened to the episode where you got a concussion. 
you know, concussions are no joke. You should want to get to check that out with health insurance. I'm like, Oh man, this is a great poll that shows you're just listening to random episodes. Really, uh, really won me over. Uh, long story short, I'm on TCU plus ten. Kramer, what are you doing? You're taking uh, oh, TCU I, as well. I told you, we we set up the TCU tournament play all yeah. year. It's just terrifying. Now that we're here, it's it terrifying. is scary. Now that they're playing, but Houston. I think we I think it's more of a money line play than the points, if anything. Yeah, I don't know. I'm with you. I don't know if I like them. Uh. <laughs> but he, I mean, honestly, if I'm Hugh, like I understand conference tournaments matter, but a team like Houston falls in that bucket of who get like really who cares. Uh, you got bigger fish to fry. Like people have been talking uh, some serious smack about you uh, not being able to get it done. Uh, real quick, since we're talking about Houston, who's one of those teams, uh, the other teams who are fit in the Ken Palm top twenty in offense and defense contender list. Uh, UConn still on the contender list. Arizona on the contender list. Houston on the contender list. Auburn on the contender list. Smash. And Marquette on the contender list. Hmm. That is it. Marquette and Auburn are two that don't jump out at me, at least like I test. Or I wouldn't have like if you asked me to guess, I yeah. probably wouldn't have included. Duke those and two. Purdue are right there, very close. Duke, Purdue, Tennessee, North Carolina are kind of the like on the fringe, right there. Could end up being there. All right, let's head over to the Mountain West, our favorite conference. Shout out to the Mountain West for having some serious drip on their conference court. Our gals, uh, fitting that our gal uh, won a digital horse race uh, during the Mountain West tournament. When sign. I have a future on San Diego State, laying four and a half here against UNLV at home, essentially. Not really be- because of the tickets, but kind of. Uh, certainly, they'll have the the. Although, if if any other team in the Mountain West is going to have a ton of fans there, it's San Diego State. It's Utah uh, State. All, all, well, yeah. Also, the Mormon angle. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, 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 again, I'm not going against my future here, uh, even though it's four and a half points. Uh, give me San Diego State, Colby. No, I'll take UNLV. I think San Diego oh. State. They play a shit ton of close games. I think the Aztecs probably win, but I think you know, look at, look at what they've done. So they just lost by two in overtime. Before that, they lost by four. You know, they only beat San Jose State by eight the game before that. Now they did blow the shit out of Fresno. But my point is, is that they play a shit ton of close games. So I will take UNLV in the points. I do think the Aztecs win. I think it's a little too many points. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I have a UNLV future. They lost the last time they played in Las Vegas. And the San Diego State team, as much as uh, they are our gals, and I, mm. I think they're a decent program, I didn't have a future on them. And I do think. They're they're not quite the same team at least this year on the road. I mean, look at their last away games: lost at UNLV, lost at Utah State, lost in OT at Nevada. Now they beat Fresno State, they beat Air Force, they lost at Colorado State, they lost at Boise State, they lost at New Mexico. Now I get it; it's a neutral court, but uh, UNLV has some fans who I think are going to be at this game, and uh, I think that's going to be a big difference. So yeah, give me UNLV. Uh. I don't want to alarm anyone, but this temple appears like it was meant to be the uh, beginning of the city of uh, the new city of Zion. Uh, this, <laughs> this is uh, I don't I don't. I, in fact, I'm gonna. Close. What's that? What's that story in the Bible of the guy who built the tower? They were like trying to build the tower to God. It really, it really looks like uh, that. Joseph Smith uh, involved in this. This this, this is deep. This uh, I wouldn't go anywhere near this building. Um, he was not, a Maryland terrapin. Too. Not, right? Oh, really? Jo- not yeah. professional advice. Yeah. Joe Smith. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have you guys signed up for the free bracket pool over at Champs? Not only do you get a chance to win a thousand bucks, but you can host your own bracket pool over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. So since you know us, you got a free entry, but you can get a second free entry, two free shots at a thousand bucks. You're gonna you're gonna be playing all these free uh all these March Madness contests. Why not play one for free? We got a chance to win a thousand bucks. Sports gambling podcast.com slash champs. They have all these other notes, but I don't need to explain a, a March Madness bracket contest. And again, host your own on champs, earn an extra free entry. It's just that simple. Sports gambling podcast.com slash champs. All right. So moving along. 
We are now in the Pac-12 tourney. We're out in Vegas, Sean, just like we'll be Friday, 6 p.m. on the West Coast. Sports Gambling Podcast live on Veasan. UCLA, Oregon, Oregon laying three here. 2:30 on the West Coast. Uh, so far, the been a good Pac-12 tournament for the LA schools, the AKA the new Big Ten. Colby, you uh, let you lay in it with Oregon here. End of the road no. for UCLA. Nah, Oregon's been heartless all year. So Ooh. I question, I question, like at least U- UCLA, even though they've been asked, they've shown at times they got up and were chippy. Oregon just like to me, I don't know if Dana Altman's. I think this might be the end of the run. So I, I know there's a distraction of Mick Cronin going to Louisville, also going around, so it makes it a tiny bit tricky. But I think UCLA's playing better basketball right now uh, down the stretch. For the most part, I know they had that two or three game skid, but I think UCLA has been playing better towards the second half of the season than Oregon. Um, you go back and look at UCLA beat them 71 63 on February 3rd. Um, I just think they're playing better basketball right now, and, and Oregon just stays injured, they just stay injured. So, uh, give me the Bruins and their youth to uh, you know, give the Ducks some problems. Yeah, I I think UCLA is one of those teams where the fact that they played Oregon State, they got the offense going, nice ten point win that actually helped them. I think in this tournament, and I think actually Oregon, in a weird way, might have benefited from like an extra game leading into this, get things right because Oregon's kind of come in cold with losses. I mean, obviously he lost at Arizona, um, but lost at home to Colorado, lost to Cal, lost to Washington State, lost to UCLA. Like you said. Uh, I think this UCLA team has a pulse. I got a future on them, so I'm going to continue riding them. Give me UCLA plus three. Uh, based solely on the eye test that from today, this is could be potentially that problem where I watched one of these teams and not the other. But <laughs> I, UCLA did not look like the team they were all year. Uh, I'll take UCLA here. I think I might ride UCLA and uh, USC all the way. He could go all the way. Well, I, I yeah, I, we have uh, we had we did spread the board. I do have a UC, USC future. You have a UCLA future, yep. Sean. So that one of those classic tout moves. We both win. Discord getting loading <laughs> up early and often here. Uh, give Morgan, quack quack, motherfucker. UTEP, the miners, taking on. Li- we have not uh, talked about Liberty. Speaking of places no. with strange temples, uh, Liberty minus. Three and a half, three thirty p.m. on the West Coast. What's the take, Colby? Well, uh, this is in Huntsville, Alabama, so it's not where you know in Lynchburg, Virginia, where that place gets absolutely bonkers. But uh, yeah, I mean, Liberty struggled. They jumped up from the A Sun to the CUSA, eighteen and thirteen. That's not they. They normally have like a twenty-eight and four record. I feel like. Um, yeah. And they've struggled, and and meanwhile, Golding, I feel like he still hasn't got UTEP to where he wants to go. But they play a similar style to me, like just a hard-nosed defensive team, ass on offense. <laughs> and uh, uh, to me, I think that that bids well for a game, a neutral game. Give me the miners and the points, is I think that, and they they're one, they've won three straight too to end the season. So they're the twentieth best defensive team in the country. Liberty's got a bunch of staples. I think UTEP's able to staple them down to the floor and cover this number. And I also think uh, money line's not a crazy play here. I'm with Colby. I think in some ways they're like similar versions of each other, but UTEP is just the better version, a better defense, uh, grind it out. I mean, you look at their stuff in conference. Um, UTEP number one in defensive efficiency in the conference. Um, you know, number one in turnover percentage in the conference, number one at stopping the three ball in the conference, which is one of the bright spots of the Liberty offense. So I think they, the UTEP defense has a lot going for it and game flow wise. I think that's going to be the difference. So I'm with you. I like the three and a half and I think they're alive. Yeah. Th- this is a pace battle game. Whoever wins the pace battle is probably going to win the game. Uh, so w- with us being on the miners, we're going to, we're rooting for tink, pace. Tink, 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 we're tink. rooting for, we're, we're rooting for uh chaos, I guess. Providence. And, and like Colby said, uh, chaos and staplers don't mix Providence heading to Michael Crichton or to take on Michael Crichton in beautiful New York city. Crichton 
laying seven and a half here, 4 PM on the West coast Providence. Uh, you asked Ed Cooley to do it this one last time. He, he didn't do it. Didn't do it, but he's still all. rich, motherfucker. He um, hates that. He hates that team so much. He does. the The body language of Ed Cooley is pretty comical. Ah, agreed. That timeout when he was talking, you just looked. Even the announcers were talking about. Oh, he'll be great, and uh, he'll, he'll be great uh, as a broadcaster after his career. <laughs> They're like sitting there just saying, "Man, this guy looks like he can't. He can't. He can't get to these players." And uh, yeah, I ate shit on that play. I'll take Providence in the points here. Like I said, uh, Michael Crichton has a history of struggling at the garden. Um, Providence might have a little home edge too. So uh, you add that to the mix, you're getting this many points. Crichton not really playing for anything. I mean, I guess you could say Biggie's championship, but they're in soundly. Um, Providence. They beat Crichton last time they played. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the Friars in the points. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could talk yourself into well, obviously Creighton's a better team. It is a kind of a revenge spot, but they they split home and road. And to me, this is gonna feel much more like a Providence home game than a Creighton home game. Like if you're a Creighton fan, why would you go the big city? New York. Are you, go, city. are you going to New York for the Big East tournament? Like, no, you're gonna follow them in the actual tournament if you're going to travel for a game, right? I mean, Colby, yeah. you don't think they're gonna have many fans, right? No, they'll have the one <laughs> like the one New York City bartender that fucking left Omaha. You know what I mean? Someone's, and uh, yeah. Mid- Midnight Cowboy two point oh, <laughs> and uh, couple, like a couple freaks dressed up as Blue Jays in the uh, in the stands. Uh, I don't know though. They might have to travel to watch the game. Do they have internet down there yet? Can they? Are they? Do they have a streaming made it to Nebraska? Oh man, I, we almost need a whole separate podcast of uh, Ryan talking to Noah. Um, <laughs> pulling back the curtain, we have like a thing called Office Hours at SGPN. Like, hey, you got you know issues with your stream, issues with your show. Let's let's take some time, work through some issues, <laughs> and somehow it it was. It was uh it was like forty five minutes of Ryan talking to Noah about his internet connection, about uh, band ba- about broadband being offered in the area. He was explaining coaxial cable to Noah. It was uh I was just sitting there really enjoying. He it. did he did want me to speak to his parents. <laughs> yeah, he goes, can you speak to my mom and dad about upgrading the internet? Uh, it was a very funny moment. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, like. I do wonder. I haven't spent enough time in Nebraska. I've spent a couple nights in Nebraska, but oh. is this one of the situations like we saw with Osama bin Laden when when he got captured or when when we killed him and we went through his his uh, his his house Spider and he hole? had a remember he had a bunch of uh, like beta and VHS like yeah. porns. I feel like technology. I feel like Nebraska could be <laughs> on that level where yeah. <laughs> They just got Die Hard One. Um, I mean, listen, when, you know, you gotta keep that analog shit. You don't when the yeah. when the uh, when the EMP happens and all the digital stuff is destroyed. Where where does the <laughs> porn come from? Ryan is referring to the el- electric magnetic pulse uh, that's gonna take out uh, all digital signals. And Noah checking in, saying, "Good lord, my Wi-Fi is ass." <laughs> Yeah, no, having bad Wi-Fi is uh is really annoying. Uh and maybe Creighton has that issue. Either way, I'll take Providence and the points plus seven and a half. Kramer, what are you doing? You here? stumbled into a great angle. They're they're in the big city with the good Wi Fi. Oh, they're gonna crazy. be distracted. They're gonna be they're gonna <laughs> if you're if you're from a rural area and you don't get that that nice big city Wi Fi and you got a hotel room where you're by yourself. Oh man Wi Fi with no restrictions. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> You have to know when to Imagine clap. They the, might be drained. They're not going to be able to. Oh, they'll be too tired to clap in the in the audience. Imagine the uh, <laughs> the outsourced ID, IT department in uh, in India just watching the uh, internet traffic coming from those crazy <laughs> kids' rooms. Uh oh, the Nebraska guys. <laughs> oh, they're really into some aggressive stuff. Uh, Pornhub there. just released uh, the searches. Uh, <laughs> women who love porn. The searches have skyrocketed thanks to uh, Creighton playing uh, in New York City. That's actually a great uh, way for those sites to make money. Just start hitting up people who use their site a lot. But hey, uh, so we have all this history of your computer <laughs> accessing our site. Uh, how much is it worth to you? Uh, all right, let's let's. What are you doing, Ryan? Did you are you officially on Providence? Oh, I'm well? on, yeah, I'm on Providence. I agree. I mean, Colby kind of touched on it, but the Creighton tremendously bad track record uh, in the Garden over over the years. Uh, Mike, Mike, with a decent point here. Uh, Creighton does have the sharpshooters. Yeah, like there's a version where they just outshoot this Providence team. 
Uh, if they get hot from behind the arc, sure. But um, I'll take the chances. With now, vi- the vibes in the building matter. I, I think the, the 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 quote home angle plus just the the general like vibe home angle. I like Faden Creighton here. Kansas State heads the, or not heads, but wakes up in Kansas City, Missouri. Now they got to face Iowa State, who's rested. Did not see an actual number out there, so we we uh, we conjured this one up. We got inside a uh, prick Dundee's head and made up a number. Four p.m. on the West Coast. We're gonna say Iowa State minus seven. Hmm. We think it's got uh, potentially injury related uh, with Kansas State. Um, I mean, wh- I, what's your take on this one? We we kind of broke down the we we galaxy brained if you remember, Sean, the Big Twelve. Uh, Torney in terms of the futures, and that's what led me to take Kansas State, TCU, Tech, and Texas. Yes, I'm not going to include Kansas because that was Colby pushing that horrible <laughs> angle on us. <laughs> he forced us. I, ne- I us. never, I never, uh, you know, I never actually went uh, went ahead with that one. Oh, what? What, you know? what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean you didn't go ahead with it? Information is key, my friend. <laughs> battle uh, plans understood. changed yeah. at the last. Yeah, second. battle plan yeah. changed. So now that we're sitting where we are, yes. um, we've un- unfortunately, uh, well, not unfortunately, we lost Texas, but we knew to hedge in the futures market with Kansas State, or at least I did. So uh, y'all are out. You didn't. You just said no. Nope. I remember Sean's words. Even I'm not going to do that silly three hundred to one. No, thank you. Well, here we are. Do I continue to ride the gravy train here? Iowa State is one of those teams we we generally like to fade when they're away from home. Colby, Kansas State live here. They always are. This is Farmageddon, and uh, but they just played, man. That's I the know, thing that I makes know. it weird. Like like K State just beat them in the Little Apple, sixty five fifty eight on March 9th. You, so that's you think the that's thing good that or makes bad? me. I think that's bad because I think you can quickly make adjustments. You know, I, I think that the team that lost has the upper hand there uh, because you can, you can study the film and do what you, you know, and come at a different approach where K state is probably thinking they're going to do the same. Um, I'll I just take, hate, yeah, I, I just I'll, feel, I, I mean, I'm with you. I like, I understand the bounce back spot for, um, for, yeah, for, no, Texas I, choked more than Kansas State won, I guess, right? Yeah, and I don't know, man. I I just I don't believe in this um in this Kansas State team very much. I mean, you know, l- look at how much they lost since the since basically like mid January. Iowa State, Houston, and granted Houston, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, BYU, TCU, Texas, Cincinnati, Kansas. Now, sure, Kansas is tough and so is Houston, but I, I don't know, man. Like they just have bad vibes as a team. The revenge factor, I think, is enough. They got out. Kansas State outscored and Iowa Texas. State's defense, I think, will be able to figure them out. Kansas so. State outscored Texas, uh, forty-nine to thirty-five in the second half. That feels like an outlier. Give me Iowa State. I'll Cranberry. I'll take I'll take the points just because K State and like Iowa State is still playing for nothing. It's a rivalry game. The fan base should be kind of neutral because because they yeah. travel, but. Um, I just think K State needs this. They want to go to the NCAA tournament. You got to win some more of these games. So I'll take the points to at least cover and make it interesting. Uh, but I kind of think Iowa State's going to win the game. Yeah, seven points though. Assuming it opens around here, I, I, I'd also take the points. Um, although this is another one of those games, like Iowa State could make a mess of this for Kansas State. Uh, but we'll see. I, you know, in this one too, you get the uh, they did play a game already, so a little maybe maybe Iowa State comes out rusty. Another one that we do, don't have an actual number, so we conjured one up ourselves. Four thirty on the West Coast. Dayton taking on Duquesne. Dayton laying six. This Golden. was the injury one. This was the one where I felt like we weren't sure because of the uh, potential oh, injury situation. Okay. Yeah, uh, but um, I mean, I'll, six. You said six. We made it right. Um, you disagree. Kind of need to know who's going to play, but I'll lay the six with Dayton. <laughs> I don't think Duquesne's that good. Uh, Sorry, I CJ Sullivan. Carolina fan. I've seen this setup before, Sean. We got to put an asterisk next to this one. You gotta get an <laughs> asterisk. Strong, strong Benedictine. We'll we'll reach out to Cut see if they can set yeah. a line on 
uh, how many games Colby will change between our show and uh, and and the college basketball experience. So Colby, you're taking Dayton here, huh? Playing the six. I am. I, I just think Duquesne. Uh, they got to prove it to me against good teams. That Duquesne's whooped up on shitty teams. Prove it to me against a good team. Uh, I think Dayton gets it done here. Sean. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to look through and and come up with the case for Duquesne. I just can't. I mean, Dayton beat him by whew, 16 at home. Uh, beat him at Duquesne as well. I, I don't really see much of a case for Duquesne. Uh, Dayton all day minus six. That feels a little short. Is the only thing that's kind of scared me off. Kramer, what was that crazy half court shot? Uh, who that was TCU Oklahoma. Yeah, you're right. That's that. Did you see the that first half uh, shot? Nicole. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. <laughs> the guy's dribbling it up, insane. turns it over. <laughs> the Oklahoma guy has it. He turns it over, and then the the TCU guy just chucks it up and uh, college basketball. Sean. Court. It was great. College basketball. Too bad it wasn't the end of the game. Would have been a buzzer beater. Shh, don't say anything. <laughs> Dayton uh, unanimous. Yeah, yeah. You're on. Uh, you're yeah. not on Duquesne, no. Ryan. No. I could have seen that coming. <laughs> no, of course not. No, no, I look at how many no, dogs no, I have. No, get no, out, no. get off my, uh, get off. My you do, porch. you do. They're very dog heavy car. Six p.m. on the West Coast. Why not? One more in the Mountain West. Colorado State, Nevada, Nevada laying two and a half out in beautiful Las Vegas. Colby, how'd yeah, they get this line? It's just uh, the two and a half because uh, they they made the three from f- fucking fifty five feet out oh. to uh, win the game. Um, you seem upset, Colby. No, no, no. I'm just saying lazy, lazy. They no, were no, no. Um, okay. Give me Nevada. I think Nevada is just a flat out better team. Colorado state today. They did not cover. I was on San Jose state. Thank you fools. Might have took the Rams, um, but uh, Colorado state plays with their food. And, and they to me, to me, Nevada, I took a future on Nevada because Steve Alford actually looks legit this year. This Nevada team I'm, I'm actually really sold on. So I, I I'm going to lay the two and a half. And I think they're the, just the flat out better team. They, they, they beat them last year or last game without black shear. Who's like their best player. So uh, yeah, I'll take the wolf back to get it done. It's Col- I, Colby's future. I, think. I love this Colorado state team. Uh, Isaiah Stevens is so fun. Now he fucked up our underdog fantasy uh, pick a entry, mm. but mm. I'm running it back with Colorado state. And I kind of think I like the points because I could see this team losing by one or two. Uh, because they've had some crazy outcomes to their game, so I'm taking them. I'm not going to play them on the money line, but I do think uh, plus two and a half, the seventh in the nation at the two point shot. Like the offense is so fun, and you want to talk about teams that are due to trip up. I think this Nevada team uh, might check the box, but may- maybe I'll just go bankrupt, keep fading uh, Steve Alford. But uh, we'll see. I'm going to stick with Colorado State in the two and a half. Yeah, they oh and two in the regular season. I mean, let's go. Give me Let's Nevada. go meeting I'm, Nevada. I'm, a, I'm on Alford. I'm the fighting Alfords. I'm with Colby. Hey, uh, time to hit up underdog yes. fantasy. Have you used your promo code SGPN? Have you gotten your hundred percent deposit match? What are you waiting for? Fortunately, our uh we had three in a row, I think, of uh hitting these two uh, team pickums. Too much touting. Too much touting. We did press the bet, uh, Ryan. Back to normal wagers for myself. Oh, you're right. Damn it. That's why, because we yeah, both had the right. same gleam in our eye of like, yeah. hey, time to press. And the gambling gods don't like that. The gambling gods do like free deposit matches when you use the promo code SGPN, uh, underdogfantasy.com or the underdog app. Colby, what do we like uh, for tonight's card? Uh, well, you know, the first thing that always jumps out to me, I don't think we're going to, I'm going to ask you guys this one because I kind of think they're baiting us. No. Dawson Garcia, higher than 17 and a half. I think they're baiting us. I think, I think uh, Izzo is going to have a defensive game plan for Garcia. So I was going to, you know, I know that they've been, a, he's been a darling for us in, in this underdog pickup thing. Cause he just hits the higher every time I feel like, yeah. um, but let's not take that bait. Let's go to that. Let's go to that white night in uh, in oh. New York City. I like how he 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 gave out a whole play not to take it. 
He's well, because really, it's he's appealing. Really Why is that number so low? It's like what? No, I, I'm with you. I don't want to fuck with Izzo in conference tournaments. This, but I'm just I'm more admiring the for or against. Honestly. I'm I'm admiring the trade craft of of Colby. Oh, just Colby's ta- not new to this. Giving game. out an angle and then not actually making it a pick. And then genius. And then if it hits, genius. you can always. I go, too see? live dangerously. He goes, uh, see, <laughs> it, when when Dawson Garcia has 24 points, Colby goes, I told you I liked it. And then when yeah. he doesn't hit. Uh, and when knew he has that nine points, knew that stunk. <laughs> when he has nine <laughs> points, you can just go, "Oh yeah, come on, we were all over fading that." Uh, all right, no Dawson Garcia. I'm fine with the stay away. What do you like? I mean, yeah, that's but that's 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 the way you're supposed to do it, right there. Uh, let's go to Joel Soriano. All right, uh, mm. for uh, for St. John's, I think higher than eleven and a half points is the play. Okay. He is essential to them winning us essentially. So, uh, uh, yeah. And I like that better than the other play one and a half PRA. I, I don't trust that either. Uh, cause he has passed the ball once in his life. I feel like, and, uh, yeah. So let's take the higher 11 and a half Joel Soriano in what a critical like game. Lower? Um, let's go to the likes of the mountain West. All right. Okay. I am going to take the lower PRA on Micah Parrish for for the Aztecs, our gals. Fifteen uh, and a is half this? is the number. Are you seeing this one, Ryan? What? I'm not seeing it. No, I'm not, I'm not seeing it either. What? Micah Parrish? Oh no, I, I see. San Diego State, see, UNLV. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two R's, Sean. Two R's. Oh, and Parrish, there's two R's. Yeah, okay. The, so P, we're doing PRA lower. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, so it's back to regular unit size. Higher on Joel Soriano, eleven and a half points. Lower Micah Parrish. So, and, and just to confirm, back to regular unit size. I am. All right. Now wait, watch. Kramer's gonna still no. make it a two unit no. just to no. try and flex on me. No, uh, but I, but I I was just thinking, Sean. We will be at the slot machine in less than two days. The slot. How's the slot? And our show's earlier than normal, which yeah. means we have more gambling time. Yeah, the show gets out <laughs> at eight, so it means we can hang out with Derek Stevens for like four hours. <laughs> did you? I don't know if you saw the Derek Stevens tweet, uh, producer Josh. If you can uh, pull up uh, our good buddy Derek and look up his uh, Twitter. There was like a Twitter. Uh, oh, actually, I found it. <laughs> Do, is he is he uh, accidentally going going live again? I'll. Uh, that was pretty funny too. We were hanging out, drinking with him. All of a sudden, he's like, "Oh, what the uh, fuck? This thing's live. What's going on here?" Uh, all right, I just chatted it to you uh, in Slack. Uh, there, Josh, if you could pull that up, it's a it's an all timer by uh, the great Derek Stevens, which we will be seeing. Hopefully, you can hop on the show, Vison Live. Always enjoy hanging out with him. And it says in hashtag Vegas at Circle Las Vegas, might get in trouble tonight. And it's just a screenshot of uh the time and someone responding, oh no, because it's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I, I yeah, all right. we'll, we'll only. put this on the rundown for the VEASAN show. We'll have to ask. Him. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, hope everything's okay, Derek. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, let's I know Derek. Stuff's fine. <laughs> let's he up. thrives in those environments. Uh, just well, hopefully one day uh, we can go on one of those secret adventures with Derek. All right, uh, let's head over to the MAC tournament, Mid Atlantic Conference. We're heading to the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, Sean, which is in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. We've been to Cleveland before. Yes. Not not to the field house. Never been no. there. Believe land. Uh home of the Cleveland Cavaliers. So they actually play basketball here. This is a novel idea with these conference tournaments. Also, previously home to the Cleveland Lumberjacks, part of the IHL, the Cleveland Rockers, part of the WNBA, and then a whole bunch of minor league hockey teams. The Cleveland Barons, the Cleveland Monsters. I'm sure the Wait, hold on. Did you know there's a team called wow. the Cleveland Monsters and they haven't had to change their name yet? Uh, Colby, monsters scare lots of people. The Cleveland yeah. Gladiators. Uh, Colby, of course, was a huge fan of the Cleveland Gladiators in the uh, Arena Football League. Also, I know he was a, a closet fan of the Cle- Cleveland Crush in the mm. Lingerie Football League. And uh, it, did you know uh, this is also the home to the Cleveland State Vikings? My my Vikings, my new. Uh, which, by the way, I don't think we've touched on it, but. Uh, 
I had Cleveland State, I had Milwaukee, and I had Northern Kentucky. <laughs> this is uh, an all time uh, jinx. Yeah, the, three of Kramer's future got to the final four of the uh, tournament. All 20 to 1. And he goes, All I need is Oakland not to win. All I need is Oakland not to win. <laughs> Oakland wins the first game. All yeah. I need is Oakland not to win. Oakland wins the second game. Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a tremendous uh, bad beat for me. Uh, s- shout out to the Mac. It's a classic tournament. We have eight teams, uh, so we have four first round matchups. Looking at the futures odds, Western Michigan fifty to one, Miami of Ohio the seven seed twenty to one, along with Central Michigan the four seed, Bowling Green the five seed fifteen to one, Kent State the eight seed all the way down there at nine to one, Toledo the one seed at three to one. These are wild. Ohio, the Bobcats, also three to one at three seed, and my zips plus one seventy to take down the championship of the MAC. Colby, what? First of all, uh, gotta love to see a conference where the seed numbers are not even close to an order when looking at the the conference futures. Uh, you taking any long shot stabs, or only at the top of the conference? Uh oh, did we lose Colby? I, I will say the uh, the look that uh, Sean has looking at frozen Colby right now. No, it, I mean, it's it, but Colby almost looks like he's looking back at you. Yeah, sadly, maybe maybe uh, maybe his his internet got swapped with Noah's. You think so? <laughs> you, you think it's a whole college experience thing? Yeah, uh, they're getting sabotaged by corporate gambling. We got we're, we got a, a panty raid going on from corporate gambling <laughs> university, stealing all our Wi-Fi. <laughs> Kramer, what do you like here? Well, I mean, I'm an Akron Zips fan, so yeah. I I start by saying, give me the Akron Zips, okay, plus one seventy. What I was gonna ask Colby is, is, is there a long shot I should invest in uh, to have a little action going the other way, maybe on the other side of the bracket? I, the other question I, I was, <laughs> sorry, real quick, sad cowboy fan uh, with an all time <laughs> nickname, Pick Dunn Freeze. <laughs> Uh, oh, yes. It wasn't that the guy's name in Shawshank? <laughs> Dumfries? Oh yeah, Dumfries. <laughs> uh the juice pointing out maybe some thunder snow uh hitting the Santa Monica area. So stay tuned, Colby. Uh could have an atmospheric river. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's let's talk out some of these long shots. Central Michigan, uh, Miami of Ohio, Western Michigan, I think at fifty to one, no shot. Well, um, Colby's not here, so we could probably, if we wanted to, talk about uh, Ken Palm for a little bit. Okay. He was very upset. Uh, I was. I wasn't. Why are using, you getting those numbers? Wasn't using the basic <laughs> analytics that he's more comfortable with. Uh, yeah, looking at the Mac, uh, the, the Mac rankings. I mean, it, I, I would say this this conference profiles like a lot of the conferences we we talk about this time of year, where um, the top isn't that far away from the bottom. Uh, you certainly see. Oh at, wow! Holy shit! He's back. What happened, up, Colby? What I happened? don't know. I, hopefully everything's okay. <laughs> P- people thought there may have been a thunder snow situation <laughs> in Santa Monica. Someone called you Pick Dunn Freeze, uh, which is going to be a, a it's a tough nickname to beat. We were and we were just I was just starting to talk about how I know I'm locking in a piece of Akron at plus one seventy, but is there a, a long shot to come back with on the other side? Uh, I mean, I think there's, there's, I mean, I Akron looked like ass down the stretch. Now the good news yeah. is, is they get Miami, Ohio. Uh, but I, I think Ohio is coming out of that South side, the North side. I think the value is on bowling green. So I'm on Ohio mm. and bowling green. To, those are my two sprinkles. I think they play in the championship game. Really? So you're going Ohio and Bowling Green, all right? Three to one and a fifteen to one. That's I was gonna, bad. I was gonna make a case for Central Michigan, Colby. Um, now I understand they beat Bowling Green twice. Both were in overtime. Both crazy games. But you look at their profile as far as a MAC team. Number, uh, I mean, very good in defense. Uh, first in defensive efficiency. First in effective field goal defense. Like. This chips team can play some defense. I think that can keep them alive in this tournament. Now, obviously, you like Bowling Green to beat them in that first game, but they're both. I mean, Central Michigan's twenty to one. Bowling Green is fifteen to one. I don't know. I I kind of like the chips here at, at twenty to one. Look, the chips are a decent play because they're having an unbelievable season. They haven't been yeah. this good in a, in a while. But I don't know that. See, to me, like 
when you have those teams that aren't accustomed to even making the Mac tournament, there's a much bigger pressure that comes to it. Uh, Bowling Green to me with Todd Simon, a he's, he's an experienced winner as a coach. So I, I just think there's a little bit of an edge there on Bowling Green. But I, look, I, with the chips odds the way they are, considering how they they played all regular season, I, I I'm not going to tell you that's a bad play. Um, but I do yeah. think Akron, who I was all over early in the year, is like this is the best team in the MAC. I don't know what the fuck happened to them down the stretch. I don't know if they had a North Carolina situation where a girlfriend's fucking the whole team. Oh. But uh, I, I don't, I don't know. That, they but the, they were twenty-one. Who will get penetration? Twenty-one point dogs or favorites to uh, Eastern oh. Michigan. They lose, and then they lose the next game after that to a bad team. So it's like. I don't know how, like I, from a roster standpoint, they're the best team in the Mac, but does Ali look, Ali have any more years left? I think it's his final year. Nah, uh, he's not going out like a bitch. Come on. Yeah, all right. I'll, you know what? I'll, I will join you on bowling green from mm. the other side of the bracket. And I can't play and bowling I'll, green. and I'll take Akron. I'm going to Ohio and uh, central Michigan. I know I saw someone in the chat saying central Michigan, Miami of Ohio. Uh, no. is is burning money, but this the regular Ohio team has been uh, red hot. Uh, Ohio, I think, is probably your best value play at plus three hundred. Uh, decent path here, and I I just don't know if I can trust Akron at those small odds. So I yeah, think my, I think yeah, Miami think, is certainly a waste of money. Yeah, not touching Miami, but Central Michigan up top, Ohio down low. That's why we like uh, Akron too. Like they they basically have a buy. Right. Well, Mac they've or? lost. Uh, they've lost to the two, like two of the worst teams in the MAC recently. So I don't know. Oh, but, well, they're uh, focused. They're focused. And who? Who do you think is? Uh, let's play a little uh, MAC geography. Who? Which? Which school is closest to Cleveland? Toledo, I'll but let, not by I'll much. Let, I'll let Sean go first. Oh no, Akron. Akron is yeah. Uh, it's probably uh, Ohio, <laughs> Kent State, and and Akron are both probably the, the like by mm. by far the closest. Um, and then you You're have talking like about the, though Kent, Kent State and Toledo are what twelve miles apart from one another, right? Oh no, no I'm I'm thinking no, no, of Akron. No, no. I'm thinking, thinking of Akron. Of, My bad. Kent yeah, State, Kent and, State Akron. and Akron. That's what I yeah. Toledo, yeah. Bowling Green uh, are over over there uh, in Michigan. So yeah, I mean, if would that not influence a home crowd? Like we do, we don't think the Akron. Uh, faithful are going to be there support. Uh, come on. You got, you guys are overthinking this. We, we used to be an Akron program. All right. First round, unless you guys got any more, uh, takes. no Ohio and uh, central Michigan, 8 a.m. simple <clears throat> early morning. You're gonna have to ho- hopefully you might miss this one, but Kent state, the eight seed Toledo, 8 the, AM tip. the one God. seed. I love this. I love this shout out. I mean, the, we, it's we action. Did. It's back. They, they were like, you know what, Sean, you're not used to watching football on Tuesdays. We're gonna create that football. I mean, I respect that as someone who created sport during the pandemic. Yeah, I respect that. Toledo uh, only laying five and a half here, and as we mentioned earlier, uh, Toledo being three to one in the futures and Kent State being nine to one stood out a little bit. Eight seed down there at nine to one means they're live. Colby, are you taking the points? <laughs> Stinks in this uh, in this MAC because what they won by fifty. Kent State, or you yeah, know, they swept I, I, Kent State by both those numbers. They just but, played. They just played. and they that was the last game they played. I'm on Kent State just because, man, Toledo has fucked around and lost. They lost to Northern Illinois earlier this year. You know what I mean? They lost that. They, they, they lost the they have, Green. That's what I'm saying. To me, uh, the line is telling you everything here. I will take a shot on Kent State. I think it's worth a money line play. These are rivals too, so you add that to the mix. I like it. Let's go, Golden Flashes. So you're going to take the eight seed over the one seed here. All right. I'm just saying they just played. I, I I like that advantage in a lot of situations, especially right. with decent teams. If they're a shitty team, I'm I'm on more on board to fading them. But like Kent State's not a horrible. They they, no, they no, won no. the MAC last year. Toledo no, 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 minus no, no, no. five and a half. Toledo's offense is pretty good. Um, yeah, so on. you're going to need Kent State's defense to play up a little bit. But I, I'm with Colby. I think this is closer to a. One, maybe two score games. So I think you're all right with the five and a half. 
I'll 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 take the five and a half with Kent State. Kramer's laying it with obviously with Toledo. Yeah, come on, you know you know how I roll. Bowling Green, the five seed. Central Michigan, the four seed. Eleven thirty a.m. on the West Coast again. Fire up chips. All the games in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm I'm with Colby. I think the the number tells you everything you need to know here. Um, Bowling Green's the better team. Uh, they have the higher seed, but they have the better futures price. Everything's lined up beautiful. And Better. other than their court, their court's not beautiful. Too their court's disgusting. Bowling Green Lane, two and a half. What? Uh, I was saying it's funny. Sean's fading the better. Mm. Yeah, I was. You you cut out there, but uh, in general, I I thought uh, is this not Sean's directional Michigan team? Yes, it is. That's you I guys thought, completely I thought so. forgot about. No, this I'm is handicapping, a the, handicapping the handicapper here. <laughs> Uh, Colby and I are on the right side. Sean, we need to get you a Central Michigan basketball jersey so you have a, a team that's still alive for something. Oh, it is so sad. <laughs> Lehigh, I, you know, wearing two jerseys at once and both teams losing in the same window. We need to get. Oh, that's what we need you to guys get. Are, you, you guys are underrating Central Michigan's defense. Number one in the conference and defensive efficiency, effective field goal percentage, three point percentage, their second, two point percentage, their first. They play some good D. That D gets it done. Give me uh, the chips catching two and a half. What about that offense though? That's three hundred and twenty fifth in the nation. <laughs> um, and and like oh, I was what's, trying to what's, say, what's Bowling Green's three hundred and nineteenth? Come on, two twenty six. Okay, two twenty six. So the Golden uh, State Warriors in their prime. Much better free throw shooting team. All the difference oh. when the game's on the line. Green. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, right. a, I'm a free throw aficionado, but sometimes, you know, you got, you got to take your chips in fairness. Both of these teams are ass from the free. That is the one, the, the number I'd say the best thing about the small conference tournaments, they all suck from the line. It makes I, it I'm very watching exciting. the main ball handler uh, for Utah Valley. And there he gets to the line. He's like, yeah, it's been a rough year for him at the line, <laughs> shooting sixty-two uh, percent. Like a, a one and one in a huge situation, guys fucking airball it. It's ah, crazy. College basketball. Airballing a free throw is I mean, you would get clowned in middle school. Dude, uh, I haven't seen a guard airball a free throw since <laughs> since like honestly, since you you play in like the little six or seven year old league. That's yeah. the last time I saw a guard airball a free throw. Yeah. Well, watch Unbelievable. these conference tournaments. Yeah, uh, Miami of Ohio taking on Akron 2 p.m. Um, on the West Coast, which means this is a little bit later. Akron fans gonna have a little time to get prepared. Uh, Akron uh, specifically in the micro matchup. Uh, Miami of Ohio, if they're gonna have any success, it's gonna come from behind the arc. And Akron is one of the best teams in the country defending the three-point line. That's the end of the handicap for me. I I don't see a world where Miami of Ohio is going to score a ton of points. Meanwhile, Akron should have a good matchup on the other side. They're my zips. Uh, I mean, zip Akron's, it up. Zip Akron's it up. two and four in their last six games. Like I, I just don't think they're that focused or dialed in. I'm worried. I, I think they might. There's a now Miami of Ohio is terribly bad. So this is yes. a maybe this is that bounce back Sean, spot. This but, is a give. They beat Akron. Akron. They yeah. beat Akron earlier this year. You got to take the points here, based on Even the way more. we've seen Akron play. Yeah, I'll take the eight and oh. a half. But the Colby's my point, God. Well, sometimes, sometimes it works the other way, right? Where, oh, hey, you know, they already beat them this year, and then you know, all of a sudden, Akron's super motivated for revenge. But they're just not playing good basketball. I, I yeah, mean, it can be that simple. I would have loved to fade. I would have loved to fade Miami, Ohio, had I not seen Akron the the final, you know, two weeks of the season. I would have been all over Akron revenge, but now I'm like, man, I don't even know. Eight and a half points is a lot for a team that just got their ass whooped by a couple shitty teams. Um, I'll take the points until the, until proven otherwise. Miami of Ohio is basically the same distance to Cleveland as Buffalo, New York. That's some fun geography right there. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, save it for your map. I just look at you and call I, 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 It's just uh, the the center of the country is. I just marvel at it all the time. <laughs> West Western Michigan, the six seed, taking on Ohio, the three seed. Seems like everyone um, had nice things to say about the Bobcats laying eight and a half here. Uh, Western Michigan is my directional Michigan team. I'm more Trash. of a football guy. Colby taking the points with me? No, I am not. Uh, <laughs> Ohio no, is no, just no. way better, and uh, they're red fucking hot to end the season. Yeah. Um. So I will take the Bobcats. That's what I'm saying. Like. 
down the stretch, they were the best team in the Mac. So I think that's, I think there's great value still out there on the Bobcats. And uh, how about Western Michigan away from home? Three and 12. Uh, they're not very good. They're 285th defensively, 238th in offense. So keep clapping there, Sean, for the Bobcats as they get it done. I was clapping for the Bobcats and the Matadors. Uh, but yes, I'm with you. Ohio just, uh, you know, breeze by and uh, looking at this Mac conference. I, I think Ohio honestly should be the odds on favorite here. I understand Akron has a lot of talent, but they're certainly not playing great ball right now. Maybe they play into form, but the fact that you're getting better odds at Ohio at three to one to win the conference, eight and a half, I think is very doable here for them as well. So lay it with the Bobs minus Obviously. eight and a half. Four, uh, four first round matchups, four favorites. Let's go. <laughs> It's a, they call it a formula for a reason, folks. I did take a five seed. They just happen to be favorite. So the uh, the Discord will be on Western <laughs> Michigan. All right, all right. Hey, shout out to Hall of Fame Bets. You guys signed up with Hall of Fame Bets. What are you waiting for? Optimize those parlays, and their college basketball product will be ready uh, for the tournament here in just a few days. So again, producer Josh. Uh, just cashed a twelve to one NBA parlay, courtesy of Hall of Fame Bets. And uh, I mean, again, they're a sponsor. I'm always gonna hype up sponsors, but gotten a bunch of great feedback from the Discord, the screenshots. Uh, follow them on X as well because they tweet out uh, what they come up with, and then also <laughs> basically the the copy is like, "Hey, do you have parlay ideas?" <laughs> yes. Uh, if you're listening to the show, you probably have parlay ideas. Why not optimize them? Get them, um, you know, get them locked in. And really, th- the main reason you should do it is just you save a ton of time researching the deep data button. Super helpful. Uh, head over to Hall of Fame Bets uh, dot com, or sorry, hofbets.com or the Hall of Fame Bets app. Use the promo code SGP and get fifty percent off your first month. Start betting smarter, not harder, with Hall of Fame Bets. Uh. How many? Are, how, oh, before we uh, we get to it, do we want to determine a number? Number of locks. Oh, number of locks. This feels like a two lock episode. Two lock. All right. Yeah. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. know, Colby. Do you want a third lock in there? I like. Well, Colby I mean, it depends. Does the listeners want more money? <laughs> okay, three locks. three locks. Have we ever said, uh, "Hey, let's add a pick or a lock," and then decided no <laughs> in the history of our show? It's a good, it's a good bet. Uh, all right, so we have three locks and a dog. Yes. Our best bets for the card March fourteenth. Kramer, you are first on the clock. Well, uh, the lock clock. I have a lot Drew of Drew res- Lock clock. Oh yes, lock sir. around the clock, baby. Can't wait to get my fix the uh, quarterback issue. Drew Lock. Jersey. Uh, well, I, I have a lot of reading to do. Maybe watch some YouTube videos because there is a very interesting structure in uh, Missouri that is making me uh, want to take BYU laying the points. Probably got to grab that before everyone else realizes there's some sort of energy structure that's been built. seems like they were trying to recreate the beginning of existence. I, I I'm really getting worried about this. Uh, this state of Missouri lock number two. Um, Boy, I have so many dogs. I'm actually having a little bit of a struggle trying to identify the thing I like the most. I, I, you know what? I'm going to lock lock number two. We're going to go with Seton hall plus the points. They've owned St. John's this year lock number three, uh, because this is where we are. Uh, San Diego state, our gals, uh, it's, it was a sign that horse uh, dominating the field, including a horse called fly Eagles fly. And for my dog pick, uh, fuck it, TCU. Let's go, T- a big Ooh. big time matchup against Houston. Uh, I I I I've literally been talking about this moment for months. So here we are. All right, uh, love the BYU play. Gonna co-sign that as one of my locks. Uh, they just look hot. They seem like one of these teams that can go on a roll. They now, are hot. I, and now maybe I'm just basing it off this first game, um, but we'll see. Uh, for my other lock, uh, there's a couple interesting. A date minus six. This feels a bit short. Not a believer in Duquesne at all. I feel very comfortable laying the six there. Let's see what else do I like here as far as locks? 
while while you're thinking, there is a um, Duke NC State game tomorrow. Ooh, uh, which we didn't talk about, but Colby, I rock hard place. Which side are which side are you on there? Let's go pussy pack. Oh my god! I, I knew. I see. Yeah. I knew he was going to do that. That's why I wanted to get him on record taking the pussy. Now pack. I maybe I'm a prisoner of the moment once again, but VCU. Uh, you know what? Uh, Colby, what should I do? VCU or UTEP plus three and a half? What do you like better there? Uh they I mean VCU because it just doesn't make any sense. Uh see, I'm not I, I'm going UTEP plus three and a half. Ooh. I, I I also like VCU. I, I I'm back and forth on that one. And then for my dog, give me the UCLA Bruins on the money line. Dog. Colby, what do you got? I am with you on the dog. That is the the Bruins. They're gonna they're gonna. That's my dog play. I think they're gonna beat Oregon. Uh, the other locks. I will go Nevada minus two and a half against Colorado State. Oh come on! I will also the take. Rams. I will also take the Super Soakers in yeah. and around the labyrinth. Uh, uh, we just, so, we just did a three sword salute on BYU. <laughs> a lot of then, sword crossing. And then give me the Dayton Flyers minus the points against a questionable Ooh. Duquesne team. Sorry, CJ. I feel like it's a screen. It's like the uh, scene from Ghostbusters where the streams all cr- combine into yeah. one. But it's it's our heads, and it's the Super Soaker. <laughs> it's the Super Soaker three three mega lock. Yes. Someone get on uh, Jake uh, or someone get on a AI graphic of uh, three Super Soakers combining for one powerful stream. To knock <laughs> off Texas Tech. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> yeah, you, you know I guess what? it's it's seen the entire internet. Sean. That is true. You don't true. know what it might think. Super Soaker. There could be some uh, bizarre moments there. All right, hey, that'll do it for the podcast. Appreciate everyone tuning in. Make sure you smash, smash that subscribe button. YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Toss us a nice rating review. Always appreciate that. Always hooking up listeners with the gift card. Again, submit your application to join DGen University. Dgen dot university to get started to a more amazing future. That's going to be our slogan over at Dgen University, uh, and of course, uh, make sure you subscribe to the College Basketball Experience as well. Get in on the free March Madness pool for a thousand bucks. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash champs. More college basketball tomorrow night. Check out the Beeson Show Friday night at six for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green. He's Ryan. A house of worship and educated education, quote, dedicated to the pursuit of peace. Kramer, let it ride. Thank you for.